on number eight is how Bahamian xenophobia is now being used as a weapon to further encourage international Afrophobia. This came with a link. Let's check it out. Hey, family, make sure you join us on the new and improved African Diaspora News.org. Now, it is our uncensored and raw truth website. We have to make sure to have our own website because on social media platforms, they do have rules. And at any time, they could change a rule and shut a whole genre down. Now, that would not happen to us because on African Diaspora News.org, we can speak the truth. We don't have to hold back. So make sure you join our website today. Well, there are some, you know, brothers and sisters in the Bahamas that are speaking out about illegal immigration. And, you know, that conversation of illegal immigration, you know, is always focused on, you know, here in America. And, oh, you know, y'all, you know, wrong for talking about illegal immigration, um, especially in our black community. And we talk about, you know, hey, you know, illegal immigration isn't good no matter where people come from. It isn't good. You need to come through the country the legal way, the right way. We talk about the resources going to people who aren't citizens of this country and say, oh, that's so divisive. Y'all wrong for that. Well, I want you to hear how our brothers and sisters in the Bahamas feel about illegal immigration with Haitians. Let's roll it. Public outcry on the Haitian ambassador's comments continue to mount even on social media. Immigration department officials continue to spread the message that if you are not legally living or working here in the Bahamas, you must return to your homeland. In our country, we are doing them a favor, right? And by doing them a favor, they're supposed to humble. They need to go back where they're from. And they're too bigoty. The Haitians have their country. The Bahamians have their country. And it is our country, and we could decide how we want to run our affairs. It'll take a little bit too long. From they burn the Bahamian flag, they're supposed to be in deported out here. How our government could give them privilege to have flag day in the Bahamas? On top of that, they've actually disfigured our flag by burning it. They also had parades for their uh, for their uh, various uh, leaders in the Bahamas. When most of them come here, they've already gotten everything free. I mean, and some of them are the hot. They owned um, restaurants and fruit stands and all of this stuff. Why not have them pay their own ticket back? When you come into this country legal, then you have your children, you, they born here illegal. You understand? It becomes now a burden on the country that they exist in. Additionally, there are many Bahamians who feel that governments of the day took far too long to deal with this immigration problem, which has enabled illegal migrants to feel that they are more than equal in this country. Now, is that conversation that you heard divisive? Is that wrong? I support my Bahamian brothers and sisters feeling that way. Because you know what? You have to come in the country the right way. You have to respect the Bahamas and the people. You coming in and getting advantages that the citizens is not even getting. And then you disrespecting the you know the Bahamas flag and all of that. You know the people have a right to say that. Listen, you heard what they said. We made a way for basically for them to come there. And then when you come there, you thinking you better can do whatever hell you want to do. It's the exact same conversation that Black Americans have about Black immigrants that come in with those attitudes. Not all have those attitudes. We're talking about those who do come in here with these attitudes, trying to run off at the mouth, talking about you guys have no culture. That is the dumbest statement I ever heard. When people mention black culture or the culture throughout the world on default, it's a black American culture. It's not yours. Whoever says that it's ours. Period. You don't you we, we can point to many people and say, where's your equivalent to a LeBron James? Where is that at? Where's your equivalent to a Kanye West? Where's your equivalent of, of just many people? Michael Jackson. You know, where's your equivalent of Martin Luther King, Malcolm X? You know, you can mention so many different people, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Where's your equivalent of those people that people know throughout the whole world? Y'all would be silly to let people even offend you by telling you you don't have a culture. Like, you no, know, we have the culture. That's what we have. The culture. The culture of the world. Period. 
Matter of fact, your cultures are copying ours. Well, you think a lot of the different genres of music come from even different parts of the world. Do you know in uh, the African continent, they doing drill music? Where do you think they get that from? If you listen to even, they can get mad what I'm about to say, even if you listen to Afro beats, you can literally hear the influences of American music in Afro beats. You can hear it. And that's fine. I'm not tripping on that. I'm not tripping on any of that. I think black people being diverse is the most beautiful thing ever. But when y'all come here or even go to the Bahamas, come in the right way. And then when you come in, don't come here being disrespectful and saying you're better and, and, and you're this and you're that. Oh, I'm successful. What do you mean you're successful? Because you got a job working for the white man? You successful? You got a white man's degree? That's what makes you successful? Well, we got a better culture. Well, why you didn't do the culture in your, your homeland? Well, why, why is your upbringing didn't, didn't translate to anything better in where you come from, brother? A sister who says that, of course. Anything you say about black America or even talking down to the uh, Bahamian brothers and sisters, why didn't you do that where you come from? And like the sisters say, hey, you need to go back to your homeland and go do things there. And that's the same thing a lot of us be saying. You need to be in your homeland and doing things there. Stop running all the time. Stop leaving places. If black America had our own particular country with a bunch of resources, do you think we'll be leaving that? Hell no. I mean, that'd be the flyest country on, on planet Earth. People like to talk, talk down on us. We're living behind enemy lines. We're living in Babylon. We're living with the devil himself. And we outnumbered and still have made a lot of progress, even living in the land of the devil. Some of y'all leaving places, Uganda just discovered $12 trillion worth of gold. Why in the hell would you want to leave Uganda? Man, I'm like, look, I'm trying to figure out how I get up in there. But see, what happened is summertime, and I've heard this conversation, let's say a bunch of brothers and sisters go to Uganda and say, hey, we better get in on this gold, man. We, we got to get access to that. How we can get in on that mine of that, that $12 trillion worth of gold? We need that. Then some of them will get mad. Oh, they're coming in and just taking advantage. Well, you weren't mad at the Chinese. You weren't mad at the white man or Lebanese or anybody else coming in here. Why are you mad at us? Hell, we'll even share with you. We'll create some businesses or whatever and, and break bread with you. That's how we get down. You know what I'm saying? We, we, don't, we don't exploit nobody as black America. It's not in us to do so. Now, of course, you got some scammy people here and there in black America, but they 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 low level scamming beyond what you they never could really get to the big time scamming like like the Bernie Madoffs, them types can't, you know, you need to get to that level. But don't call people divisive when they're saying you need to come into the country the right way. Don't call people divisive when they say you need to be in your homeland doing certain things when you're being disrespectful, because usually when you're respectful when you're just doing the right thing, no, man, we are happy to have you here. We're happy. If you're trying to join with black America to, to help us, you know, fight for, you know, reparations, things like that, we're happy to have you here. That's the purpose of us even wanting you here is to join with us, right? But if you're going to sit up there and join with the white supremacists, oh, no, you can go. You need to get on out of here. I have no problem with ICE picking you up. I don't. If we Listen, ICE can pick up all the raccoons they want in our community, take them out of here. I don't need them. But if you're a brother and sister, you're about the right thing, you're about assisting us, because anything that we get, you're going to get. It's, it's a trickle-down effect. If we get reparations, you're not going to get reparations, but you're going to benefit off of it because we'll be able to shop at your businesses a lot of you have. You know, you'll be able to uh, uh, break bread and, and come do different things with us, right? Well, we don't see you no different than us, but when you have the certain ones who are raccoons and who are enemies of black society have been allowed to come over here to put a bunch of dissension among black people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Ice, ice and go ahead and get, get, get you out of here. I'm cool with that. But uh, shout out to my brothers in the Bahamas. I, I'm definitely going to go and, and visit my brothers and sisters in the Bahamas, and I'm going to do it the right way. I'm not going to sneak in. I'm going to get a visa and wait till it's approved and do it, do it the right way. Because I don't disrespect no black nation by trying to come in illegally. I won't do that. I won't do that to nobody's nation. If they say I can't come, I can't come. It's all about respecting people's country and doing things the right way. But let me know what y'all think about 
you know, the, the brothers and sisters in the Bahamas. They just fighting for their country. That's all. And I have no problem with that. Living in America as a black person, you recognize there is one set of laws for you and one set of laws for those, especially in the white community. In our book. All right. That's Uncle Phil. Bahamas citizens are fed up with illegal immigration and immigrants disrespecting them. Is Tanzan still with us? What about the forecast? Yes, I'm here. Uh, okay. Tanzan, what say you to this? Well, I guess, you know, there's going to be a lot of FB everywhere. Now we're going to be FB Bahamas, FB South Africa, FB who knows where, you know. It's funny how when it comes to policing each other, you know, suddenly we know all the rules and regulations and history and all of that stuff, but other people, we don't even question them coming in and out of our countries, just right. each other. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Now Thank pass. you for that. Is the forecast here? Uh, if, not, let's, if not, let's go to gas them up. Gas them up, what say you? Yeah, this is um, the same old... <laughs> You know, it, 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 these people are running around in circles. Um, so I, I guess in the Bahamas, the, um, the issue was that Haitian immigrants were coming to the countries. Now, I don't know if the video said they were misbehaving or they were acting arrogant, if that was the major complaint. And, and I can understand that, you know, um, that, that, that should be addressed. But... Do you blame the Haitian immigrant or do you blame your politicians that you voted in, you know, for um, strict? And then also, you know, when, when people come into your land, um, you know, what type of system do you have in place to absorb them? You know, if you don't have a system in place that absorbs them properly, then they're going to, you know, segregate themselves and eventually create their own thing within your land. And that can cause a problem if they get strong enough, if they get a stronghold. So, you know, um, I can definitely understand how they would feel if somebody, you know, is coming into their land. I, I, I think they said they burned the flag. You know, that would be offensive. So um, I can definitely understand that. But I think that should be on a political level to um, ensure um, that the, um, if a Haitian immigrant is being brought to the Bahamas, to stay for a lengthy period of time, that they should be um, encultured within um, the ways and customs of uh, the Bahamas. So, hey, you're still a Haitian, but now you kind of have to adapt and adopt this new um, way. I think that's something that should be done. Um, people should find ways to do that. And then um, when the guy started launching into these um, arguments that the FBA and we're not against you and go back to your country and all. like I said, these people, man, they, I think they're all confused. Um, they have no power in the U.S. And so you hear him saying, I have no problem if ICE picks you up. Well, ICE is a government organization. It's a government, you know, uh, entity. So you don't have any control over ICE. Just like you have no control over the uh, police departments that come into your community and terrorize you, it, it's just the powerless, you know, shouting at the powerless. That that's all it is to me. I'll end with that. Kevin Carey, what say you? Well, all I'm seeing is you know um, this hyper nationalism amongst our people. I think first it was, you know, the even going back a couple of years ago, even people from my country when they used to go to Barbados. You know, the Bayesians used to just hate, you know, the presence of a lot of Jamaicans there. The same thing was going on with South Africa and then the Nigerians. And I remember during the, um, before the World Cup in South Africa, they had, they had, they had, they had to clear out a lot of the Zimbabwe. They, they used some, some people called the Red Ants to be killed just to get them out. Now we have the, this FBA versus immigrant. This this stuff has to stop. This, this, is, all, this is all about division at this point. There, there is more to this. We, we don't see the person, the people in the background. We know who they are, but we have to see it for what it is, man. Divide, united we stand, divided we fall. 
Zulism? Um, well, I think this guy is using... I think this guy is using... At the end of the day, the Haitian government is a piece of shit. They should be... They should prepare their, their people better so that people don't have to leave their country and go into other people's country. Hey, at the end, I'm going to say that. The first person to blame is the fucking corrupt government or whatever the shit is. Second, I think this guy is using this situation right there to further his um, FBA, whatever the shit is, xenophobia towards um, freaking uh, immigrants. So he's saying that a reparation, you could help you get reparation. But at the end of the day, after you fo- after you get your reparation, we're going to sue your country and get that reparation that they stole from all those little Caribbean islands. And then he's going to say, it's not, you can't touch my reparation, right? But but you're part of that government that goes into different worlds and, and, and use up their economy, especially in the Caribbean and Africa. So after he gets his reparation from the so-called uh, Amer- America, we're going to take the whole of America to court, and that's him included. I'm, I know this is never going to happen, by the way, but that's what I'm saying. So this guy, Phil, whatever his name is, uh, what can I say? He's just... It's just he's just using that to be like, oh yeah, you see, other people could do it too. That's the same thing we're doing. So I, I'm I don't know the situation that's going in the in the Bahamas, and I thought I, I think we saw that video minus Phil in there maybe two months ago or something. But at the end of the day, the Haitian government ain't shit. They supposed to be providing and protecting their people. They didn't defend the Haitians from the Dominicans. So what the fuck do I expect? So if your people is being mistreated in the Bahamas. It's your fucking fault at the end of the day. So that's it. Only what say you? Oh yeah. Uh yeah, I mean shit. What happened? I, I I was first I was like thinking like Azuli, like, yeah, we already saw this. Then I'm like, oh, this is some ADOS FBA shit. Like what? Uh you know, the 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 difference between because I don't know why the FBA believe, oh, we could be xenophobic too. Everybody's xenophobic. Yeah. There's a difference between like somebody breaking a law, you know, and then somebody like legally being here and not, you know, let's all right, let's just be real, like not sucking your dick, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, because like, apparently that's what they want, you know, you to do, which is just like, ain't nobody gonna do that. Um, uh, so yeah, with regard to the Bahamian uh, Haitian thing, they're talking about illegal immigration, you know. Uh, illegal immigration, like basically, if I when I when I, when I let's say when I went to Ghana, I had to get a visa. They checked my visa, right? I did not like, you know, hop on an airplane and then just kind of walk around uh, Ghana, um, you know, without their cognizance, without them knowing, uh, just sneaking around doing whatever I want, and then like on top of that, burning the Ghanaian flag. Like, no, I didn't do any of that shit. You know, I just. I went to Ghana. I said, hey, I'm going to stay here for this long. They said, hey, you can stay longer. And I'm like, can't. And then that's it. I stayed as long as I was, went on the ship, went on the plane back, done. Uh, nobody's complaining about that, right? Uh, the difference being that the quote unquote black Americans are complaining if you apply to the United States, get approved, and then you know go through the long approval process, get approved, and then live in America. And then as you're living in America, as long if you do not suck their dick, right, their dicks, then they're going to be like, you're a piece of shit for some reason. And it's like, why would why would anybody be sucking? You know, like, why would they do that? Uh, uh, especially because they didn't ask you as black Americans to get to America. They asked white America to get to America. You know, uh, like black America is dependent on white America. You know, that whole idea of the guy saying, what, you think because you got a job with this white boy? Like 98% of black Americans who are working work for the white man. So like, what is what exactly is the issue here? You know, I'm surprised that he called himself the executive journalist of this website when that whole piece was just kind of just misinformed rant about how superior black Americans are and how much everybody wants to be like black Americans or something. But it's like, yeah, that's just stupid, you know? And and I mean, like, I never really talked to the guy. 
I I kind of hold some respect for him because he has his own channel type shit. Um, and he was trying to be like a journalist. He's always been boring. This is a little bit less boring, but it's irritating, you know, um, in the sense that why is he pushing for this narrative? I thought he was supposed to be positive. Um, of course, I never followed him, so I don't know. But yeah, this was just um, like it was, it was, it was low key disgusting. Um, and I think that's all I can say right now. Mr. Untouchable, I'll give you the last word. Yeah, I, I take a different position, even from, from my lady friend, <laughs> who is extremely nationalistic. I take a different position from her. You know, I, I don't have no grudges with the Haitian people trying to do what they're trying to do. They're trying to survive. They're trying to exist in the world, you know, um, legal or illegally. I don't give a shit about that. You know what I mean? I, I think that, you know, if people in desperate situations do what they need to do to ensure their survival... You know, I, I wouldn't come to another place and try and start burning flags, though I think that that may create an issue, political issue, you know. But I, I understand the, the um, I understand the situation on both, both sides of the discussion. You know, I, I, I think there's a lot of nuances that was left out of the discussion. But I would say this, if, <laughs> and I know this is true 100%, if the Bahamian people were to investigate and do DNA tests to test the blood of the so-called Bahamian people that exist in this particular island, we would find the composition of much of Haitian family members <laughs> that we want to deny that these people, you know what I mean, are really no, are no false. The Haitians are Native Americans. That's that's not true. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But if <laughs> well, if if they believe in DNA, you know what I mean. If we if they believe in DNA, some of them, you know, if we will really was to do an in depth investigation about the Bahamian and the Haitian connection, we would find much of these people to be our blood brothers, and that's a fact because you can't exist in such a close territory. And interacting with one with one another for not only decades but for hundreds of years, and to think that these people really just right to the south of us are not, you know, you know, integral family members. We are just connected. I think that there's a lot of Afrophobia going on, even though I understand the other side of the discussion, and I really don't even want to get into that. What I would say though, as far as the xenophobia element, because my sister was talking about the fact that xenophobia and illegal immigration are different. When I looked into the comment section of this particular video, I I saw some I saw the Haitian people being referred to as "man, let them cockroaches go back to where they come from." Now the the the, the under the thing it, it didn't have a name or anything like that. I, it, it was a bot probably or some white supremacist or agent for the government trying to create a lot of disunity amongst us. Even though I've heard Bahamians talk in that language, even though I've heard them talk in that language, I consider that to be xenophobic. And that, sh that shouldn't be tolerated. You know what I mean? Because the same thing existed in Rwanda when human beings start to be referred to as insects. And that was really, that, that came at, at the cusp of their own, the genocide that, that was created there. But I, I don't um, pretend to play that so-called nationalistic game. I am a Gaviite, and I see these people as my brothers and sisters, regardless of the fact that they speak Creole and I speak broken Bahamian, Bahamian English language or whatever you want to call it. And I mean, I understand that they're in a, in a difficult situation. And God forbid that we, if we was in that situation, and I've known many Bahamians who've gone to the America illegally, America illegally, and existed there and send remittances back to the Bahamas. So I think that sometimes we could be hypocritical. I, I um, place this video here really to hold up the mirror to us because sometimes we have to hold up the mirror to yourself. We can't escape our own personal issues that we face. But to grab this video, because this is, this is, this for me, this is a mental illness. So to grab this video and use it and say, well, look, these people have a mental illness of Afrophobia, we have a mental illness as Afrophobia, so we are united in our Afrophobia. I, I think that we shouldn't do that. I think that we should expose the best of one another, and we should use that 
as an example to try to, to, to do better, you know what I mean, as we relate to one another and try to progress in this world. So I, I take a different view this time, this time, but everyone knows who my views is on all this side. So I just really wanted to, to, to present a, a different opinion on this particular subject. So that's me. Again, I don't want to understand what you're saying, Mr. Untouchable. At the end of the day, whether the people, the Haitian people are suffering, all of that, the number one culprit is the fucking government. The number one culprit is the government. And whether when your people go to other country and they treat them bad, again, it's your own fucking fault. Look what they let the, the Dominicans were killing people, Haitian people were beating them, selling them and kicking them out of the country. Even those who were born in the Dominican Republic, the Haitian government didn't do nothing. Nah, we gotta take responsibility for our own fucking piece of shit government. These Haitians ain't doing shit over there. The people are suffering. So what are they supposed to do? So even even though this this guy is like you're right, this guy is using that in order to justify his bullshit. And it's dumb. But I get it, but I just know that the, the Haitian government had failed their own people for a while. So some tried, not not because it's their fault alone, because there's other puppets, puppeteers playing strings, but at the end of the day, you have to love your people. You know what I'm saying? If if your parents treat you like shit, like what do you expect the people of outside to treat your people like? So this is what it is. I appreciate everyone tonight. Uh, like I said, we're going to end it at that prompt. I appreciate everyone who was here on the panel tonight. I appreciate everyone who was in the chat tonight. Make sure you guys share the content, like, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we'll be back next week. Maybe I might do something during the week if I hear back from certain people in time. Make sure you guys check out all the other shows on KWAZ Radio. Uh, check out Tanzan on Swahili Nation on Tuesdays. At around 2 p.m. Eastern Sign of the Time. Uh, again, thank you guys on the panel tonight. Thank you guys in the chat. See you guys next week. All right. Uh, you guys take care. Peace. Peace. Yes. Have a good night. Thanks for listening to the Bitter Medicine Podcast with your host, Koku. If you like what you just heard, we hope you pass along our web address, bittermedicineblogs.com, to your friends and colleagues, and share our show to all your social media. Be sure to check out our archive section on our website for previous podcasts. This has been a KWAZ radio production. Join us next time for another session of the Bitter Medicine Podcast. Follow us on Facebook at Bitter Medicine Show, Twitter, Bitter Meds, Tumblr, Bitter Meds, Instagram, Bitter Medicine.